Hello, welcome to my channel. Uh, this is another case study we are going to do today. Then after the case study, we are going to have a, we are going to have a literature review. Okay. So the case study for today is saying, um, what is your diagnosis? Uh, what symptoms would you present? Give at least two. Then uh, what hormones would be elevated? How do you treat this condition? Okay. So that's our case study. So, uh, this last, today we are going to do the case study for polycystic ovarian syndrome. Then uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome, which can be obviated as PCOS. Okay. So polycystic ovarian syndrome, PCOS, which is just a common dis endocrine disorder characterized by excess androgen production and in the presence of multiple immature follicles or cysts within the ovaries okay then in terms of etiology and pathophysiology uh, the etiology of polycystic ovarian syndrome is poorly understood of course and is thought to be multifactorial in origin but we have the two most uh, common hormonal abnormalities present in picos which are one is a uh, excess excess ioh which is a luteinizing hormone which is produced by the anterior pituitary gland in response to an increased uh, gonadotrophin releasing hormone pulse uh, frequency, which is of course going to stimulate the ovarian production of androgen. Then the other thing is, is insulin resistance, which is due to results in higher levels of insulin secretion, and this suppresses the hepatic production of sex hormones, of sex hormone binding globulin, which results in higher levels of free secreting androgens as well. These are the two common. Uh, abnormalities. So despite the high levels of uh, LH, the increased uh, secreting androgen suppress the LH surge, which is required for ovulation to occur. So follicles develop, uh, you, you know that follicles develop within the ovaries, but are arrested at an early stage due to the disturbed ovarian function. And they remain, with, they remain visible as seats within the ovaries. Okay. So that's why we say when someone is uh, normally without this uh, pathophysiology, when normally is if you do a scan and someone is about is ovulating or when someone is having their menses, find that actually uh, there is going to be some cyst which is going to be formed there. Okay, so that's why in this condition also, due to the multiple uh, arrested uh, over arrested ovaries at an early stage. We find that there will be cysts which, are, which will be seen within the ovaries. Okay, then these factors we can have women with diabetes. We can have, uh, apart from women with diabetes, we can have irregular menstruation. We can have and uh, family history of PCOS at an increased risk uh, of developing polycystic ovarian syndrome. Those are some of the risk factors. Then clinical features the most common uh, symptoms posed by women in courses we can have body go. Menorrhea or amenorrhea, you can have infertility, you can have histicism, you can have obesity, you can have chronic pelvic pain, you can have depression and other psychological symptoms. Then on examination, there may be evidence of histicism, acne, acanthosis, negligence, she's just stuck in skin, which occurs secondary to insulin resistance. You can have a male pattern, hair loss, obesity and hypertension. Okay. Then how do you make a diagnosis of PCOS? So the most common used uh, diagnostic criteria is the Rotterdam criteria, which of course was formulated in 2003, which gives a diagnosis of PCOS if two out of three of the following criteria are met. So two out of three. So one, you can have origo and or an ovulation. You can have clinical and or biochemical signs of hyperandrogism, polycystic ovaries on uh, imaging. So, if any of these three, if two of these three uh, are met, then you can make a diagnosis of uh, PCOS. Okay. Then for differential diagnosis, we can have hypothyroidism, of course, where there is obesity, hair loss, and insulin resistance. We can have hyperprolactinemia, where, of course, there is oligoamenorrhea or amenorrhea, acne, and histosism. Then cushion is... Uh, disease where of course there is also obesity, acne, hypertension, insulin resistance and depression. So investigations, investigations we can have laboratory and 
uh, radiological or imaging. So under laboratory, you can of course test for testosterone and sex hormone binding globulin, gonadotrophin such as folic stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. You can also check for the levels of progesterone. You can also check for the levels of thyroid stimulating hormone for hypothyroidism or the serum prolactin for hyperprolactinemia. Although a mildly elevated prolactin level can be observed in PCOS. Then, of course, you can check other BS or oral glucose tolerance tests, particularly in women who are obese or with a BMI of more than 30. And then, uh, imaging, we can do a typical ultrasound, uh, find ultrasound, where, of course, after you do a tip, uh, ultrasound, you, are going, you may find uh, numerous, polycyst, uh, numerous peripheral ovary, ovary and follicles or cysts. And uh, over a volume of more than 10. So that's the uh, typical findings. And now it looks like in the on, on ultrasound it looks like this. So that's how it looks like. So as you can see there are some uh, cysts that can be seen and they are multiple. So all these. Okay. And they, depending on the literature if you can even find that they can even give a number that there should be more than this number to, for you to actually make a diagnosis of polycystic ovarian syndrome just depending on the literature okay but for this story of sake we're just going to use this picture and you have to know that uh, that's how the uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome looks like on uh, ultrasound then this is how histidism looks like so there's facial air and uh, histidism okay that's how it looks like in terms of management, of course, management of PCOS is tailored to the women's individual symptoms and needs. And in general, first, treat underlying and any underlying conditions if, they, if you find any underlying conditions such as diabetes or hypertension. So symptoms include oligo or amenorrhea, obesity, you can have uh, infertility, estetism. So you can, after you treat the underlying cause, if at all, uh, you have to treat the underlying cause or do it when you are treating the underlying cause you can also treat for these symptoms as well okay then uh, we can just go through them uh, individually so in terms of what you go amenorrhea or amenorrhea in a, in an ovulated me menstrual cycles the effect of estrogen is unopposed due to the lower levels of progesterone so this can cause endometrial hyperplasia which can which has the risk of becoming malignant so you are going in amenorrheic uh, women, it is important to protect the endometrium from hyperplasia by inducing at least three breeds per year, which can be, of course, achieved by using one uh, combined oral contraceptive pills, uh, di dihydrogesterone, which is just a progesterone analog, which is often used in the combined pill, which is used if the combined pill is contraindicated. Okay, but just use the COC lodos. So that's how you can treat the origo or amenorrhea. Then the next symptom is obesity. So weight management in PCOS is vital. While well, of course you achieve a BMI of under 30, which may be enough to trigger a regular menstrual cycle. So advice and encourage the health uh, lifestyle, including health diet and exercise. This will of course increase insulin sensitivity. And in severe cases, you can also uh, prescribe or restart, which is a pancreatic lipase inhibitor. Okay, that's another symptom. Then the next symptom is infertility. So for infertility, you can use uh, chromifen uh, plus or minus uh, metformin, which helps induce ovulation and is therefore the first line of treatment for women wishing to conceive. However, there is an increased risk of multiple pregnancies, ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, and ovarian cancer. Therefore, it is uh, limited to using six uh, cycles only. Okay, so chromophon plus or minus metformin. Then women with a normal BMI could also benefit from uh, laparoscopic ovarian drilling as well. Then you have to note that uh, as well as improving insulin sensitivity, metformin helps with menstrual disturbance and ovulatory function. The NICE guidelines uh, actually recommend metformin for women trying to conceive with a BMI of more than 25, okay? Then, lastly, when talk of estetism, 
Estrogen can be treated both cosmetically and or with anti-androgen and androgen medications such as um, uh, cyproterone and spironolactone or finasteride. However, these should not should be avoided during pregnancy as they are teratogenic. Okay, then I uh, can use a uh, ephrinothin, which is a topical cream that can also be used to help reduce the growth of growth rate of facial hair. Then that's the end of the literature review. Then for the answers for the case study, so what is the diagnosis? Is a polycystic ovarian syndrome. Then what symptoms would present? Give to acne, histotism, infertility, irregular menses, and also pelvic pain can be there as we talked about during the literature review. Then what hormone would be elevated? Can I utilize hormone? It would be elevated androgens and also uh, insulin it can also be elevated. Then how do you treat? So like we said, you, uh, give COCs. For estism and for estism and prevention of uh, endometrial cancer due to elevated and opposed estrogen, or give progesterone to prevent endometrial cancer, give metformin for insulin resistance, remove ovary surgically if associated with neoplasia or any reasoning to medications, even dietary hospital modification. So remember, we treat according to the underlying condition and the symptoms also. Okay, so that's typically the end of. Um, the end of our presentation and uh, thank you for watching if you haven't subscribed please subscribe and uh, hit the bell notification and uh, please make sure to watch other videos as well we have case, case studies on uh, a lot of conditions in obs and gain and uh, see you next time